Hi folks, this is Kellyanne with Church Windows. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's uh, webinar user group. Uh, the clock on my computer says 11.57, but uh, that's reading from our server, which keeps losing time, one of them. Uh, but both my cell phone and the clock here on our phone say it is noon, so to respect your time, we'll go ahead and get started. I trust my cell phone and the, the phone on the desk here. Um, to have the more accurate time. So let me go ahead and get rid of our presentation here. I uh, tested audio out with everyone just a bit ago, so everybody should be hearing me okay. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to look at some special donation situations, uh, transferring, giving, how to inactivate or terminate a giver, uh, what if you get a gift from an estate, and also changing a giver number. Um, today's user group webinar is being recorded. And I wanted to show you real quick. Um, here is where you can find all the webinars if you're ever, somebody else maybe signed you up and you're looking to see what's scheduled. Um, that's listed along the left under training, under free online webinars. Um, I want to show you here, if we click on workbooks, um, we're trying to reference from now on uh, what workbook we are using, if we use one, uh, what workbook we're using and what page numbers we're using. So if you own the workbooks, um, if you're on a prior version, they may differ a little because some of the functions weren't available in the older contribution module. Um, and donations has had things added to it, so it might differ slightly. Uh, but if you have the workbooks or you're interested in purchasing workbooks, today what I'm looking at uh, is straight from Donations 104. And it's the first nine pages of the book, page two through nine, looking at some special situations, transfers, inactivating and terminating, gifts from an estate, and changing a giver number. Uh, we stop there. Uh, the book has a lot more in it, but this is only a 20-minute uh, free webinar, so we're only showing a portion of that today. But again, if you're interested in the material I'm using, uh, written material, uh, that is from the Donations 104 workbook. And if you scroll up to the top, let me erase my drawings and get my clicking tool back. Oops, here we go. Let me start that over again. I looked over at my questions and <clears throat> I ended, um, I hid my screen to take away the presentation that was up and I forgot to show it again. So let me go back. Uh, I started off here on the free demo webinar, not free demo, uh, on the, under training the here we go, free online webinars. That's the page I was referencing before that shows all the different webinars for the month. Uh, and it shows next month's. Uh, the workbooks, though, that I was referencing that you couldn't see on screen, sorry about that, um, that's under Church Windows Training. If I click on workbooks, uh, the workbooks are available where we send you a link and you download and print them, uh, $12 each. Or if you want us to print them out in color and bind them and mail them to you, those are $22 uh, pre-printed and sent to you. Uh, but I was showing here on screen, you couldn't see it, <laughs> but I was showing <coughs> Donations 104 is the workbook, uh, the material I'm using today. You can find that in Donations 104, the first nine pages. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to get rid of our website and the drawing on screen and let's go ahead and open up I have church windows open already and first we're gonna look at transferring donations between individuals so I'm gonna go ahead and open up donations Let me look and make sure I did start recording yes alright make sure I did everything I was supposed to at the beginning everybody can hear me and see me and we're recording Let's look at transferring donations. There might be a time when maybe you put the money on the wrong person or you find you have duplicate records and you're trying to merge all of the donations to one record. You can do that really easily. Uh, in donations along the top we click on givers and then under that transfer donations. It's different from transferring to accounting. This is a function that will allow you to transfer donations, one or many, between your different donors. If you look at the top, you can choose the date range you want to look at, defaults to your current year. <clears throat> we can sort by giver number by checking that at the top of either the from or to giver field. 
And from giver, we would choose the person we're taking money away from. To giver, we would choose the person we want to move that money to. Um, the example in the book, uh, we have Jake Knox. And I just noticed a typo. I put Jake No, so let me change that. Jake Knox and his son, Nate, uh, the counters actually accidentally gave the money to the dad, and or gave it to the son. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. The book says they gave it to the dad. It needs to be transferred from the dad to the son. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Upper left, you can either click the down arrow and look through the list for the person you need, or I know Jake has envelope 12, so I can type in 12. Select Jake from the list. Uh, then I need to find Nate. Nate Knox. So I'm not sure what number he has. I'll go ahead and just start typing Nate or Knox. I see Nate Knox here. So I'll click on his name. On the left, I can see all of Jake's giving. On the right, I can see all of Nate's. If I needed to see giving prior to 2016, I could change the date range at the top. But for today, we're just looking at moving some money from 16. Notice along the left, the first column is a little select checkbox. <clears throat> it defaults to have all of the gifts or donations checked to move over. Now I can move everything over if I'd like, or if I only need to move a few things, I can click on select all, and then I can just check whatever I need to move over to the other side. So here I've checked off two gifts. I can click now on transfer selected and it, it tells me it's going to reverse two donations and repost them to Nate. Am I sure? <coughs> so I can say yes. It says new transactions were created. And if I say OK, we see now that Jake Knox only has three donations and it moved the two that I selected over to Nate Knox. Now I could also, we'll just close the screen and reopen it fresh. If I needed to move everything from one person to another, I'm just going to, here, we'll, maybe we put this on the wrong person. I'm just going to pick a random person here. should be over on Donna Bell. If you need to move everything over, the system automatically has everything checked. So I can just click Transfer Selected, and it moves everything from the left over to the person on the right. So really easy to move money from all of all of the giving from one person to another, or just select gifts, or just one gift. <clears throat> now oftentimes, um, kind of jumping around, we have some disjointed topics here. They don't flow very well. Uh, but the next topic we have is how to inactivate or terminate a giver. Uh, contributors leave the church, sorry to say. Uh, but once they leave the church, you might need to mark them terminated or inactive. Now, if they are only in the donations module, um, and I forgot to mention, uh, normally we have somebody helping answer questions, but both Rachel and Ross, my go-to question and answers, are out today. And at noon, uh, that's when we start taking lunch breaks. So rather than pull a tech off the phone um, right at lunchtime when we're usually calls build up anyway, it's just me answering questions. So I will take a look at questions at the end of today's webinar. Uh, those can be typed in the question panel if you... Uh, didn't see that, just click the plus by that. Uh, but do try to keep them topical. Um, but I'll, I'll take a look at those at the end of the webinar. All right, so if you've just added somebody to donations by going up to givers in the upper left and add individual or add group, uh, those are people that are just in donations, the individual or group. And if we go to manage givers, notice there's a column donations giver, this last column. If that's checked, that simply indicates this record does not exist over in membership. It's only a donation giver, a donation individual or group. Uh, to mark a donation only record as terminated or inactive, I just find it here in Manage Givers. And then upper right, I just put a little check in inactive terminated. So there we have Carolyn Ames. I'm going to mark her terminated. And if I go to enter donations, she's not going to show up. And I'll show you how we can add donations for a terminated or an active person. Uh, but we've now marked her terminated. If I close out of here and come back in, notice we don't see Carolyn Ames anymore because lower left, the screen defaults to only show us active people. If I check show inactive, 
then I can see Carolyn Ames is still here. She's just marked inactive. Here I can just see my inactive people if I like. Uh, maybe there's a person I need to mark as terminated. Uh, we'll say here Carolyn Bartholomew. If we look at her, notice there is no check in donations giver. And if I look up or right, it tells me edit, delete this record in the membership module. So that tells me I need to, I don't have to close that, uh, but I do need to go to my membership module. And she had a V after her name, so that means she's in my visitor files. If I start typing Bartholomew, there's Karen. I can go right to her record, and if I want to mark her terminated so she doesn't pop up on all my lists and labels and we don't keep entering donations for her, I can give her a reason for termination. And that's going to be somewhere on the right side of the personal information. Your order could be different than mine, um, but we're just going to say she left the area. Now if I save that, it does remind me that often you want to put the directory report order. I'm just going to say OK to that. Now if I close out of here and I go to donations, we still see Karen here, but if I were to manage givers now, reopen it or refresh it, we do not see Karen Bartholomew. Now if I check just show inactive in the left, here we see Karen Bartholomew, who is a membership visitor. We marked her terminated. And we also see Carolyn Ames, our donation giver, is also marked inactive or terminated. Now if I go to enter donations, and we'll just put in today's date, or we'll do Sundays. Uh, if I start typing Ames, notice no Carolyn. Same thing if I start typing Bartholomew, no Karen. Maybe they uh, came back to visit and donated and you wanted to enter money for them. If I check inactive and terminated just above the giver search box, now I can find Carolyn and I can find Karen Bartholomew. So if you've marked somebody inactive or terminated and they come back for a visit and you need to enter a donation for them, you don't have to unterminate them or mark them uncheck inactive. Um, just come in to enter donations and above the giver box check inactive and terminated and that will allow you then in the search box pull up terminated or inactive people and then enter a donation for them. The old contribution, you, have, you used to have to go unterminate them and run database maintenance, and then they'd be there. Now you don't have to do that. All you have to do if somebody's terminated or, or inactive is check that little box above the giver search, and you'll be able to pull up inactive or terminated people. Now moving on, uh, this is on page five if you have the book and you're following along. Um, Sometimes if somebody passes away, you've marked them terminated already, and you can easily bring them up to put something in for that terminated person, but maybe the actual estate of that deceased individual uh, donates money. If the estate donates money, we recommend, um, here we'll clear this, clear, I hit clear donation. There we go. Clear donation. There we go. I hit clear transaction action. <laughs> All right. Um, what we recommend you do is in donations, go up to givers and add individual and choose add donations individual. We just want to add their estate to the donations record. I don't see any reason to assign them a giver number because this is just to get that information in for that person. So we'll say estate of, first name you're going to put the estate of, and we'll put Carolyn, and then last name would be the actual person's last name. <coughs> um, so they do get their statement, if you wanted to send a statement then you would want to make sure you click the plus sign and put in their address. Click OK. Um, you can add anything else you need here. Make sure receive statement is checked. And then I can click add giver and then finished adding givers. And now if I go into enter donations, here I can pull up the estate of Carolyn Ames and go in, go ahead and record that donation. And I could go ahead and print the statement right now if I needed to just send it off now if I knew that was the only gift they were giving. 
Uh, but now I've easily entered that money for this person's estate without having to create a brand new record over in membership. Uh, it will be addressed to the estate when I create my donation statement and send that out. All right, the last topic we're going to look at is changing a giver number or an envelope number. You may have renamed it envelope number, same thing. Um, if you're going to assign a number or change a number, you need to determine two things. Um, do you want to change that number to a new one and erase any history of that and put all of their old giving under that new number? Or do you want to keep track of them having that old number and assign a new one as of a specific date? Um, if you want to preserve your reports, then you don't want to just go to manage givers and erase the number here. If I take a number out here, that takes the number out and takes out the history of them ever having that number. So it would be better to end the giver number, um, which we can do by going to givers and manage numbers. Here we can put an end date on a number and then as of the very next day we can add a new number for that person and that way we preserve the history of that old number. Alright, so let's look real quick um, if we're on the manage giver screen, and I'm on page six if you're following along in the, the book, uh, if we go to manage givers, I can find an individual here and if I need to change a number, maybe Bernard Stewart wants his number changed, um, I can click on the number, change it to whatever number I'd like him to have, and then click anywhere off of that, and now he has that new number. However, I do not have a history of him having that old number. If I go into Manage Numbers and look for, here we go, we got Stuart Bernard. If I ask to see past numbers, Notice, here I'll click on giver, so <clears throat> we can see Stuart Bernard since 1-1-2011. One, one, it shows having number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, if you change a number in the Manage Giver screen, that removes any history of old numbers. If you would like to preserve the history of numbers, let me turn pages here. <laughs> then you'd want to do it here in the Manage Numbers screen. Uh, maybe, let's say Carolyn DeSmit would like a new number. She currently has 18. Uh, once I click on her name in the list, we see upper right, Carolyn DeSmit. Just to the right of that, I can click Add New, type in her new number, and click OK. And now, because upper right, I do still have past and current checked, Notice, we still see her with 18 in the history from 1-1-2011 until 12-31-2015. It gave that end date because I'm currently in my 16 year and I assigned her new number, 1-2-3-4-5-7. Um, it had a start date of 1-1-2016. So that is why it put the end date of 2015. Now, if I try to do that with, here we have Jen Arnold down here with 5-24-2016 five, 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 as the start date of her number. Uh, if I try to add a new number right now, I'm going to go 987654, and I click OK, it's not going to work because, oops, where'd it go? Oh, it did. That's unusual. I thought it would... It, it, it reacted differently than when I tried it at my desk. Um, it assigned the old number as a, or the number I just gave her as of 1-1-2016 one, one, through 5-23, and then the number that just started on 5-24-2016, uh, the older number is what it kept for because that had a, a past date. So that reacted a little differently. If I wanted her to keep this new number I gave her, I can just hit the minus here and delete giver number 24. And then if I don't want an end date on this, I can just backspace that end date out. And now she has that number through infinity or until I decide to put an end date on it. Now I could also, maybe I want to end a number and assign it to someone else. Um, 
If I'd like to do that, maybe Jan, I want to take number 32 and give it to someone else because Jan no longer uses it. If I hit the minus at the end of the line, brings up a little window where I can choose some options here. I can delete. <clears throat> I can continue the previous number. She didn't have one to continue. I could delete this number or I want to preserve the history. So I'm going to say stop using and she hasn't used this number all year. So I'd like to be able to use this number as of January 1st. So I'm going to put December 31st, 2015 as her end date. Say OK. And now if I want to assign 32, maybe Penelope would like 32, I can highlight her. Actually, let's assign it to someone that doesn't have a number. Upper left, if I click the down arrow, I see the list of all the different people I have. And we're going to choose someone without a number, Nicole Frey. Now, if I click the little Add New Window, I can type in that number. It's going to start on 1-1-2016. Maybe I want it to start today's date because that's the reality of when she received that number. Click OK. And now we see, click my number here, we can see Jan had the number until we just ended at 12-31-15. And now Nicole has the number starting 10 25 2016. All right. So that was a lot I wanted to show you all in 20 minutes. We got four topics done. I guess they were pretty, some of them were a more little more simple than others. Let me go ahead and look at the questions over here. Um, someone said we use pledge income versus non pledge income. Does this need to be manually transferred in accounting to show correction? Um, you might need to call us on that. Um, when you transfer to accounting, a um, little different here, uh, if you transfer to accounting the money, you go up to special functions and link to accounting and your different giving accounts, you determine for your giving accounts where that money is going to transfer in accounting. So if all of your money is going to one account, one giving account, but you want it going to different accounts in accounting, um, then you either would want to create two different giving accounts here in donations, or in accounting, after you've transferred it, you can do a correction in accounting and transfer some of that money to another income account. Uh, but I think you really probably should give us a call on that. That's a little more detailed and um, a little off topic today too, I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully that helped answer your question. Um, somebody asked if there is a mistake with reassigning numbers. Is there an undo button, possibly update to have a save button in the future? Um, there is no undo button. If you are worried about making mistakes, you might want to make a backup of your data prior to changing numbers. Um, and then you could always, you know, if you make mistakes, you could always restore your backup and be back to where you are. Um, somebody asked, just starting church windows, can I delete all the envelope numbers at one time? You can. Uh, if you go up to givers and auto assign, <coughs> you choose your start date upper left. Um, if you just want people with numbers, you'd uncheck include those without numbers. Lower left, you'd select everyone and then use the right arrow to move them to the selected givers. Uh, then I'd click OK. Uh, then I'd click lower left on select all and then upper right I can click and numbers for selected and now it shows that as of 1117 no one will have a giver number. Um, if that's what you'd like and you're happy with it you just click save and close and if I were to go into givers and manage numbers look at future uncheck current and look at future I have nobody because I put an end date on everyone. So everybody's number ends as of 1216 or 1231 2016. So yes, you can delete those envelopes at one time. I know I did that kind of quickly. Um, we're past our time. So if you need help with that, Marsha, definitely give us a call. Uh, we might have a, um, a video or a document on our blog uh, regarding how to do that. But yes, you can do that in auto assign. Give us a call if you need help with that. Um, somebody asked if there's the same person in donations and membership entered. One name will show with a D. Can that be deleted? Will it affect membership? Um, if one shows with a D and one's in membership, then you have duplicate records. And whether you can delete it or not will depend on whether there is money entered to both of those. Um, I would go, if I were you, to 
uh, our website and click on support blog. And then if you type in the keyword duplicate, uh, the first document at the top, it's a free document. It's uh, donations handling duplicate givers. Uh, there's also a movie as well if you want to watch a movie, but if you want something to print out, uh, this is a great document with screenshots. Uh, talks about different situations and how to determine which one is which and transferring money, what to do with envelope numbers. Um, we probably need to edit this document because there are also, if they have attendance, um, version 19 in membership has transfer attendance where you can move attendance all over to one person as well. Um, and that is the one thing that's not on that doc document as of today. Uh, because it didn't exist when that document was first written. Uh, but that's one, one other thing that uh, if you're going to print that document, uh, you also, if you have duplicates, take a look if they have attendance. Where did I find that info? Um, I went to our website. And on our website, along the left, under support, and these are very useful I'll circle the two things here. Very, very useful items. The new version resources and support blog. Um, new version resources has all kinds of movies, free movies, uh, different versions. Some of them are from version 17, some from 18. A lot of them are still useful even in version 19. Uh, most of these are also available on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and look for Church Windows, our videos are there for free. Uh, but the document I found by uh, on the left under support, the last item is support blog. If I click on support blog, and at the top I type in where it says search for, I type in the keyword duplicate. Um, once I hit enter here, or search. Top document is donations handling duplicate givers. If I click on that, it takes me one more page to where I can either view a movie, and that's free, or if I click on view or print PDF, that brings up the nice PDF I was showing you with screenshots. The only thing I would add to this, and I'll have to let Pam know, she does the documents, I do the workbooks and tech tips. Um, make yourself a note transfer attendance. If you're on version 19, under attendance, there is a transfer attendance function now. And that works just like the transfer donations I just showed you how to use. It's two-sided screen. I'll just open it up real quick. I might as well. Um, two-sided screen where I look for who I want to move it from and to, and I just move whatever I'd like from one side to the other. So that's one other thing you want to look at if you have duplicates. And that's not in that document because the time we wrote that document, that feature did not exist in the program. All right. Any other questions? I think I've got all of them. Um, somebody said, why is it that when you terminate a person, you can't find them in the drop-down list in membership? Because that is what terminating a person is meant to do. It's a way to allow you to keep their record but not have them show up on lists, labels, and reports. Um, what she means is if I go to look for, remember we terminated Ms. Bartholomew. If I look for her now, I can't find her in membership. She's still in the records, but if I want to find her, I need to hit find. And I know she left the area, and that's the reason for termination I used. If you don't know the reason, you can put an asterisk in reason for termination. And then hit go or enter. If, if anybody needs to leave, I've covered everything that the webinar was going to cover, so just exit the room if, if I know we're over time. Um, but here, if I, whoops, you know what? I didn't, I'm trying to do too many things at once. I'm getting flustered. Let me try going to visitors. I won't find her in members, even if I look for terminated people, because she was a visitor. Um, let me just put an asterisk in here. If I put an asterisk in reason for termination, and then hit go or enter. That brings up a grid of anyone who was terminated. And now I can click on Karen's name and click go to, and it takes me to a record. Um, and that, that reason for termination field, it specifically hides people from finding them when you do searches or produce labels or lists, unless you specifically ask to have terminated people on the, the list or the labels, or you check and enter donations, you check include terminated inactive. Um, this way, historically, you can keep that record and 
have all the information on your prior members of your church, but not have them showing up on everything you print out. Um, so terminated people are still there, and no, you can't find them if you just do a find. Let me try it again over here, show you. And if I do it in visitors, Ms. Bartholomew does not show. Uh, but if I search for terminated people, I can then find her. All right. Are there more questions? Got some good questions today. <laughs> And that was pretty quick going through transfers, changing numbers, and terminating, and uh, gifts for an estate. Uh, this is being recorded, so every Thursday, um, I believe Robert goes in and cleans up the videos, cuts out some of the extra time at the beginning and the end, and I think puts music and a, a standard church window logo at the beginning, and then those are put up. I don't know if he puts any more up on our website. I think most of our videos are going up on our YouTube channel now. Um, Real quick, I can show you that. If you go to our YouTube channel, let's see. Oh, well, here's a video from last week, from just four days ago. It's already posted. So here we have all of our videos posted to our YouTube channel, and those are free. And there's a search with, within YouTube where you can search the channel as well. All right. Well, I think I've showed you everything I wanted to show you for the webinar, plus more. <laughs> Can you tell I used to teach? I used to teach at risk high school kids. <coughs> All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Um, if something comes up after the webinar, definitely call in or email support at churchwindows.com, and we'd be happy to help. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for attending, and everybody have a great day. Bye.